Okay, well, hi everyone, and thank you very much for watching or listening. It's Liam Hardry here today with another episode of Presenting Champions. And today I am uh, truly honored to be joined by a legend of the bare knuckle boxing scene. Today's guest, Carl Hobley, who is obviously a two time, a two weight bare knuckle boxing world champion, British champion as well, one of the toughest men in the UK. Uh -huh there with all of the uh, a lot of the best names in the burn scene so far and more yet to come at the time of this interview which is february uh he's coming up on a very big fight happening march the 30th in wolverhampton against daniel podmore big shout out to uh, the big pod he's been on this show as well uh, so it's going to be a cracking fight two of the very best guys going head to head and as always today, we'll be talking obviously about bare knuckle, but we'll be touching a little bit on Carl's training, uh, a few things going behind the scenes, a bit of uh, the mindset that it takes to reach the top in bare knuckle and some other cool topics like that. So stay tuned. And uh, Champ, thank you very much for making time for this, mate, because I know you're a busy yeah. man. Uh, so I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. No yeah, worries. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard times, isn't it? So obviously... Training, training, obviously, as you know, I've got to fight with Dan, Dan Podmore in uh, March, end of March. So, um, originally after my, my last fight with CJ, when I won my world title again, um, I was going to retire. But, um, yeah, we're here again. Um, going to be fighting. I can't, I can't actually wait now. So, it's been tra training hard and that's the main thing. Yeah, absolutely. How are you feeling in the preparations, mate? Because I know you've just um, as well, so it's, it's a busy time for family as well as training. Yeah. Do you know what? Uh, the fight for CJ, obviously, my last fight, I was it was Nathan Williams at heavyweight. I defended my British title. Um, I was 117 kilos. So, um, even though three days before the fight with CJ, I got a bit ill. I think I weighed in 99 kilos for, for that fight. Um, carrying a bag of cement around with me. So, you know, I've only got four or five kilos to go now. There's, I've got eight weeks. I'm in a real good position at the minute. Um, mainly been sparring amateur lads back home at the minute. Um, just purely for their their uh their youth and their their speed. Do you know what I mean? Just to try and try, try and get my head moving a bit better. But um, yeah, I feel I feel good. I feel good about it. So, you know, um, Dan wanted this fight. This fight should have happened a long time ago, really, because. The only person to beat us up until Dan's loss in Thailand being Mickey Barker. Um, so it made sense that we fought because, you know, I, I've beat the same people that Dan has and just it made it made sense. And, um, you know, we're finally here now and, uh, yeah, I can't actually wait. So, so um, Yeah, amazing fight. Like they say, you know, two of the best guys going head to head. That's what the fans want to what are your thoughts on the new venue as well? Because obviously this one's not going to be at the O2. It's in Wolverhampton. What? What is? Uh, do you know what you've hit? A, you've hit on a like a, a big subject there. It is hard to sell tickets. I mean, look, I live I live in Bournemouth, which is at the very bottom of the country. I know, you know, as a company and uh, as people, Jim and Joe, they, they're running a business and they expect everybody. I can't. I can't force people to buy tickets. You know, uh, to last fight with CJ in London I had people come from all over the place even like up, up north Chesterfield things like that can't force people to buy tickets and um, a lot of people don't want to go to Wolverhampton they just don't want to go the lot of it, the, the boys I've got 20 lads that come from Chesterfield down to London so they would rather have got on a coach or a train and gone to London again than go to Wolverhampton I don't know why you know it is what it is but um, Obviously, trying to push the ticket sales as much as I can, but um, I don't think it's a great, a great venue. It's not the biggest venue, but um, fifteen hundred people. It's uh, yeah, here's what it is. I don't. It's not my business, is it? I just turn up and have a fight. So yeah, but I hear what you're saying about getting people to travel. You do have a lot of support, though, don't you? I mean, when I see on social media, you know, you've got to be one of the most loved fighters out there in my personal opinion but what are your thoughts on on that um, yeah but it's we're living in a shit time at the minute aren't we you know money's tight for everybody january february they just had christmas a big christmas you know i think this is the biggest christmas since covid times people have probably spent more money this christmas than they have during covid you know um 
Yeah, I've got my fan base has been built up on a good reputation of like the charity work that I do, and I still still enjoy doing charity stuff. But um, doesn't mean that they can just whip out. I mean, even if we've got a train from Bournemouth, we take four four and a half hours to get to Wolverhampton. Then they got to stay the night. It's probably four or five hundred pound night for for certain people. If the time they had their drinks in and their food in, that's a lot of money, isn't it? You know. Even it's the same for London. I know it's the same for London because I, I have to stay and to pay for hotels for myself, my my eldest daughter. Um, you know, I know I'm fighting, but I can't force people to buy tickets. That's just how it goes, isn't it? So, I, mean, I, hope, I hope Dan does really well. He's he's from fucking Birmingham, isn't he? So, they will round us next door. I I I hope it goes well for, for him. You know, but uh, I'm trying my de- best to obviously plumb plumb people to get the tickets, but can't force people, can you? So. Well, I will say to our audience, guys, go and buy some tickets because, you know, these fights, BKB always putting on the best quality fights around. Yeah. These guys going head to head. You don't get a lot of that now in boxing and MMA. You get some, but not enough. It's not yeah. like anything else. will have a hell of a night. So, you know, fingers crossed, mate, fingers crossed. But on another side of things with your training and that, I meant to ask you earlier, do you train um, bare knuckle or do you train like with the gloves on? I want to touch on uh, that. You can't. Look, you can condition your hands by hitting like a heavy bag. And I always do that last three weeks of camp just to get my hands used to things. You can't physically spar with no glow. You would never have a face left, would you? Do you know what I mean? You'd be cut to ribbons every two minutes. But, um, you know, it could be a question I get asked a lot. People, as soon as you mention bare knuckle boxing, people are like, oh, well, well, there's such a stigma around bare knuckle as well. And people think that you do that constantly. You can't. I, was, um, I spar with 16 ounce gloves on. Uh, we went over to Croatia in the summer to spar with Marco. They, they spar with 18s on it in Croatia. They don't do nothing less. And then last few weeks, they hit the bag with uh, no, no gloves on. And then sometimes I do like pad work with 10 ounce gloves on just to like bring it down and in- increase like speed, power, and things. So, but yeah, no, you uh, always try and condition man. I learned that through um, Smudger, Smudger Smith, not the new Smudger Smith, the old Smudger Smith from Leeds. Um, I went up, used to go up and train with him up there in Leeds, and uh, he's like just condition your hands, and that's what, what I did. I, I just started doing, you know, and I think your hands get a bit sore, but it's good, you know, I haven't my hands, they're not in bad condition considering this. This my next fight in March will be my eighth fight, so um, yeah, they're not too bad, they're, they're all right, so. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I was thinking with the, with the obviously not with sparring, but with the pads and the bags. And yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense. Now, another thing people don't see a sort of a behind the scenes question when you're on the build up to um, to a fight and everything like this. Obviously, you're a very tough guy. I mean, no one disputes that. But do you feel any like adrenaline or anything that you have to sort of deal with as the fight gets? Uh, do you know what? The only thing I found in the last few few not camps, but just before the fight. You know, you might drill in and go the opposite way. I'll just get tired. <laughs> my coaches are always having to wake me up in the gym, you know, in, in the changing room. We've got like sofas and if I sit down, I'll go to sleep. I'll just sleep sleep through the adrenaline. And, you know, um I don't really feel that no more. You know, it's I've done I've done many bloody fights now that I don't it's just a process. It's a process, not adrenaline, and I'd I'd state that now. It's you know, it, certain people get they, they survive on adrenaline, don't they? Whereas I just want to go to sleep. It makes me want to sleep now. So, you know, no, it's not no ideal going into a fight being tired, is it? So, yeah, well, it makes sense. And again, it's something people don't see. And I also think it's useful for some of the, the fighters who are starting out as well to hear about yeah. because, you know, you've been around a while, you've done so many things. So, uh, very, very cool. All right, then. Now, I want to go back in time and talk about a couple of your, your previous fights as well because you've done incredible things in Burnett so far. Yeah. Winning a world title, obviously you've won two of them. But if we go back to the first one for a minute. First one, yeah. When you win the world title, I mean, obviously people have seen the fight and people know about that. But when it gets announced that you've won, what goes through your head in a moment like that? Can uh, you well, do you know, obviously, you, you must know who, who, I, who I beat for that world title. Um, the lead up to that fight was dis- absolutely disgusting. You know, yeah. the abuse that my, my family, myself got from Eric Olsen was uh, 
was absolutely unreal. You know, the man should be, you know, I know what he does. No, no rules fights. I'll fight anybody, blah, blah, blah. The only American to do this and that. Um, do you know what? Uh, he he was absolutely disgusting, Liam. Me but taking pictures of my daughter and myself calling me a paedophile on, on the internet and things. And and the, right at the, the weigh-in, he spat in my face at the weigh-in. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was rough because... My daughter mentioned there's like you get like these things on Facebook come up, uh, like memories. My daughter tagged me in a memory saying that was the worst time of her life. And I, was, you know, I felt bad just because I had a fight, I had a fight with somebody, you know. Um, so all like overshadowed the like, winning the world title bit, but you know, the man's irrelevant to me, he really is. But, um, in America, he's, he's like a god apparently, but uh, yeah. Obviously, like I say, this, this one was a bit more pleasant. This world title was more pleasant winning but than the first one. But here's what it is, Liam. I don't, I don't really look at it like that. But it's still, in my eyes, that I've achieved something more than what he, he hasn't. So, Well, yeah, that's the way to look at it. That's the way to put it to bed. I mean, yeah, a very, very controversial um, character is, uh, is Eric. I did actually, I interviewed him um, probably about a year ago now, and I, I did ask him about the family thing and why he brings that up and why yeah. he does that and everything, and he had his take on it. But I don't agree with people bringing people's family into it. But no. anyway, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, as a fighter, you know, he's exciting to watch and everything, so I'm not going to knock that, but... You know, anyway, as that's off topic. Yeah, you put that to bed. You know, you did what you had to do, and yeah. you won the title now. Yeah, it's, it's. I've been given some good opportunities in in Bernac. Obviously, my first fight was in uh, Bolton, lockdown two. Yeah. Um, Rod Cunningham. I was a fat mess. I'm still not. I'm still quite a fat mess now. But I'm a lot fitter with it, but um, I, I hadn't fought for ages. And uh, in all fairness, I probably shouldn't have been fighting, but. I've been trying to get on the bare knuckle for nearly a year leading up to that. And um, uh, I've seen that Jim had put a post up looking for a heavyweight. So I tagged, sent him some videos. He's like, yeah, you're in. We we drove, me and Steve Liddell, my coach, we drove up to Bolton. I didn't even realise the fucking size of Sorry, swearing. The, uh, the size of him, he was huge. I looked at him, I was like, you're a big man, aren't you? And do you know what? My style of uh, of fighting is quite unique because it's not you can't really train for it. It's I'm, I'm really aggressive and off on the front foot as well, and uh, you know a lot of people can't handle that, and Rob just couldn't handle it. And then um, you know they they had to offer me a, a second fight because I've basically done them a favour by getting them out of trouble by having a fight with somebody, and then um, who knows. Got Charlie Milner next. I knocked him out in 19 seconds. Then Eric. Then we hit a stumbling block in Mickey Parker. Uh, then then Jody. Then we obviously fought Jody, Nathan, CJ, and then yeah, it's just. Do you know what? I've been I've been honoured really. I've been given the best chances in this sport to uh, achieve what I've achieved, and um, yeah, it's been good, Liam. It really has. It's I'm not I'm not took a step backwards from it, so. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're you know, true fighting man, as they say, and and uh, a fighter's fighter. Well, I'm glad you, you read up the list of names because I had that here to do actually. But out of those guys, which one is your toughest fight? Then I'm sure you get asked. Oh, this Mickey, yeah. oh, Mickey, without a doubt. You know, I was doing so well, well, well against Mickey, and then uh, to obviously be, look, I would never. I would never I've got somebody trying to ring me, but uh, I'd never oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I still got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, somebody trying to ring me. I would never be disrespectful to him and say anything anything wrong because you know, my face got messed up because he he hit me, you know, that's how it goes. I'm not like opposite people. If you lose if you lose a title and then blame it on an injury or something like that, you're just being disrespectful. You know, I, I believe that you as a person, you are you are an injury. You're a walking injury yourself getting into a boxing ring, you know? So don't ever say it's because you're injury lost. It's You are that person, you know? So, um, yeah, no, I lost fair and square because if your hand don't get raised at the end of that uh, end of that fight, then you've lost, haven't you? Yeah. Um, yeah. There's people out there, not saying any names, 
thinks think that they're, they're, they're champions still because they've picked up an injury during a fight. I'm not. Most I'm not going to say any names. They they know who they are, but uh, it is what it is, isn't it? You know, Mickey, it's very very hard, very hard, and um, we're really good mates. Lead up to that fight, we were sparring, you know. So, and uh, I've had Mickey on the phone now. He's like, "Get yourself up to Portsmouth, come and spar." So that's the plan. I think we're going to get, try and head up there at the weekend, do some rounds with me. Even though he's retired, he, he's, he's I'm the only person here to put a pair of gloves on the spa. So um, that's our friendship for you. So, but yeah, yeah, without a doubt, hundred percent, Mickey. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, I, I thought it might be. I thought it might be, but um, you the know, only person I've lost to, I've got to say that. <laughs> the only person I've beat everybody else it hasn't really been that hard, has it? So, no, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But like I say, you have been in there with some tough guys. I mean, shout out yeah. to one of them and everyone who gets in that ring. They, they deserve respect. But um, I love asking that question because you never know. What's gonna oh, yeah. Now, another thing, obviously, when you got into Bernacle, I mean, you won the two world titles, you won the British title, you've done a lot in a short space of time, but when yeah. you got into the sport, did you expect to go that high, that fast, if you get what I, I was mean? Never, I was never, ever thought it would be as quick as it was, but um, they've needed, you know, like I said, they needed people to, to fight other people, haven't they? And I've always, I've never turned anybody down. Yeah. I think that's what stands me in good stead with BKB is that I fought everybody that they put in front of me. So, uh, and I've beat some of their top prospects, you know, really, when they're looking at them. I mean, look, my background is I'm a boxer. I, I train in a boxing gym, you know, and uh, some of the other lads that I've beat, they're not boxers, they're MMA fighters. So it doesn't put them in good stead getting into a boxing ring. You know, their, their forte may be that they could do a bit of wrestling or round and pound and all that shit. But um I uh it doesn't really uh it doesn't hold them in good 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 ground when they're when a boxing ring, you know? So we uh yeah no it's they uh they've had to find somebody to fight these people and I fought them. I mean I fought massive men as well. They've been they've been big units got what my five on five ten, five eleven, something like that, you know, hundred kilos. Some of these men have been like 130 kilos and I've been six foot eight and things and I'll just beat them, you know. So um I don't take nothing away from it because then like I say, anybody gets in a boxing ring, they, you've got to have some minerals about you, haven't you? You've got to have something there. So you know uh, yeah, yeah, no, I've been on it. I have it's uh, no I've I'll get on with them all. Except for America, I get on with them all, I speak to them all. So that's good. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing I have seen with BKB. There's quite a tight-knit sort of community there, which yeah. is which is nice respect amongst all the lads. I also went to ask you something here, for the again, for the fighters who are starting out. Obviously, being two-time world champion, you said earlier about sort of rising above the level of, say, Eric and other people and, and things like yeah. that. What do you think separates the best from the rest, if you get what I mean? I mean, the guys who do... Uh, I don't really... Do you know what? That's a good question, but I... Look, as, as from from way I look at it always, you know, you could be at the bottom, you could be at the top. You're human, you feel pain and you bleed. You know, it's it's just a thing, isn't it? We, You know, you could be at the top and you could hit a stumbling block and that's it, it's game over, isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, you could be the best, you could be the worst. It's one of them. It's, it's, it only takes one hit with, with, with bare knuckle. One, one hit and it's game over. A big cut. And this game over, isn't it? Don't know. You could be the worst boxer in the world and just imagine manage to land one shot and cut his eye open, and that's it. It's game over, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's always a roll of the dice in uh, in that sport, which is part of what makes it so exciting, isn't it? I mean, one punch yeah. can change anything. Um, so I hear you on that. But while we're on the subject of the, the people starting out and everything, do you have any other advice you'd like to say to somebody who's new to um, yeah. like a boxing or? Yeah. We, we, Joe put a post up the other day they're looking for venues and obviously we've got a lovely little venue on right on the beach called the Beck and you you come out of there and you, you're on the sand that's how close it is to the beach and uh, they said they were thinking about putting some trials on it might put a trial on in Bournemouth and um, I'd love I'd love to be involved with trying to get somebody to beat what I, my achievements 
you know, because we've got some wicked boxers in the town. Just don't think anybody have got the, the, the balls to stuff up and do it. Do you know what I mean? That's the problem with it. But in the surrounding areas you have, um, there's a little lad, James Livesey, that he, he's from Yeovil Way, that I put his name forward to, Jim. He, I think he's signed for him. He's going to try and fight on the uh, March show. Quality boxer. Good amateur record. Things that always really aggressive. And I think he'd do well in, in the sport. So I've been like, speaking to him. Trying to put on if he's like he's he's like, he's gonna try to go on in May. I think the next show is in May, March, May. Yeah, I think it is May. May the fourth, first of all, it is. So we're trying to get him on there with uh, Martin Pepper Smith, he does the cuts with Sammy. Um yeah, it's there's there's some brilliant talent out there. They've just got to obviously come forward, but if you're not gonna come forward, you won't get found, will you? So you know, a lot of people talk, talk, talk a lot of like, like, like a good fight. Just get in there and do it, and the show, put some trials on. You know, and uh, I think uh, other other fight promotions have done that, and they trials and things, and uh, been quite productive for them. So, I see why we shouldn't do the same as BKB. So, not me, me and Joe, or, or whatever. But uh, it'd be nice to find some new talent, especially where I'm from, because they are. I've got a couple of fights left. This one, uh, hopefully, if I can get abroad with a bit of sun on my back, I'll get to. But yeah, trying to find somebody else to try and help them do it would be wicked. But so it's a hard game, and not many people want to do it. So yeah, well, the trials thing. I mean, it's a great idea. To be fair, I mean, again, you've see, I've seen this with BKFC and uh, yeah. some of the guys that they found from the trials that they probably never would have found. Obviously, they got the ex MMA guys and all yeah. this. You know, they found some talent from um, from the grassroots, you know, from the ground up. And it's, well, it's sure. a good idea. So, uh, all right then. So, last couple of things then before we before we wrap this up. You mentioned earlier about the the pain threshold of being hit with a bare fist instead of with a glove. I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a thing in itself. I mean, if you do, obviously some guys, you finish them off quick. But if you do take a shot and it does, yeah. you know, you do really feel it. How do you sort of push through that mentally? Uh... I've never really, obviously, like you say, you get back to the adrenaline thing. It sees you through it. Yeah. I don't, I don't see it as as pain. Now. When you wake up in the, the following morning in a hotel room and you can't move, uh, it's a bit different. Let's say, obviously, the injury that I, I got, the fight got stopped through Mickey. Uh, after four rounds, was obviously my eye uh, closed up. And uh, the next one was obviously seven rounds with with, with Eric. My body was black and blue. And that, like that, obviously I had, a, I had a cut underneath my eye. I had ten stitches in the cut there, but my body was black and blue. I could hardly move. I didn't want anybody to touch me. I was just trying to get dressed the following morning. But you don't you don't see that, you know. Obviously, you just won a world title or British and things like. You get out. I went through my camp. You don't. I don't drink so. Have a drink with your friends. The adrenaline sees you through the night. It's the following morning. Um, yeah, and, you know, I'm known for having a good chin. So I don't generally, well, I, I think I don't take much punishment, but my face tail is a different story, doesn't it? But um, yeah, yeah, it just sees you through it. Yeah, I can't really explain it because. That it's when you wake up in the morning and there's nothing there and you think wow you think you've been run over by a bus you know so yeah it makes sense it does make sense I, I have heard it described that way by you know quite a few guys and uh, and it does make sense so like I say the last couple of things mate and then we'll, we'll wrap this up short we'll come up on a half hour mark that I gave you yep. but um, when it comes to like your family watching you fight in such a brutal sport and everything like this, I don't know how many of them watch, but how do they, like your close people, react to watching you fight? Because it must be exciting, but also a bit scary for them. Yeah, um, my dad, my dad comes to all of my fights. My eldest daughter Shanice comes to my fights. I think she's only missed one fight. Um, uh, my my mum has come to one fight with Eric, and she was disgusted with it. She would never come to another fight. Uh, but yeah, no, people don't generally. My close friends, some of them, some of them uh, wanted me to retire because they don't. Want, I'm that close to them. They just uh, they they obviously think something bad's gonna happen to you and things like that. And uh, 
they don't want that to happen, which is understandable. You know, you've got no gloves on. Bad things happen in boxing, and people think obviously bad things are going to happen to you in bare knuckle, and uh, they've got every right to think like that. But as a fight, my brain always tells me that I should carry on. I know at some stage I've got to stop because uh, your body, your body takes a massive, massive amount of punishment during this, just the, the training side of it as well. You know, and then um, then the fight. At some stage, you've got you got to know when to throw the tower, in, haven't you? So, yeah. Uh, well, it's close. It's close. It's not it's not over yet, but it's close. It's very close. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things about that. As we'll we'll close out with a couple of these things. You mentioned about your future plans. So, fighting abroad. You mentioned that's obviously a yeah. goal coming up. And any other goals you'd like to share? Um, obviously, now you're fully focused on March the 30th. But if we do look past that, just for a second. Uh, so I get get through March and get my hand raised. Um, originally, what what I wanted to do was I didn't see why I had to defend my the, my title. My title was down there on the floor. I didn't. Uh, I was pointing out. I, I didn't. I didn't want to defend my my title against Dan. I wanted to fight for because I was up uh, before that that world title fight against CJ. I was the British heavyweight champion. I yeah. defended that title. I was really really looking forward to fighting Dan for his world title at heavyweight. So I would have been a, a three times world champion, a two weight world champion instead of just a two two weight champion. But um yeah, what the plan is, I've I've spoken to him. Uh everything goes to plan. And I my hands raised against Dan on the thirtieth. I wanna take his world title at heavyweight. Okay. And so then... uh yeah. Well, we're being, well, we're talking about. It. Let's just be a bit selfish, you know. She's, uh, I wanted a police gazette belt, but I don't look like I'm going to get one. But uh, his world title at heavyweight that do me, and I, you know, if 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 I don't get a fight abroad after that, then I'm done. Yeah, so, well, I've possibly got two fights left in this country, including March. Then we get the hands raised in March. I want to fight down again for his world title at heavyweight. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. So that shows in your uh, in your crosshairs at the moment. That makes sense in your targets. Okay. Now, obviously, you mentioned about retirement and things like that. But when you do, um, you know, you do pack it in and everything like that. How would you like to be remembered as a fighter? How do you think you're going to? Um, do? I'm, I'm in the process of doing my level one coaching for the amateurs at the minute. So I just did my safeguarding now. Just going to pass over my DBS stuff and my first aid stuff. So just waiting for a date to do my level one coaching for the amateurs because uh, kids in this town at the minute are trying to kill each other, running around with big knives trying to kill each other. So we can stop one kid from trying to kill somebody or achieving that, you know, and that'd be the main thing is just to try and help other people. Now I've had, I've had quite a few fights now in the bare knuckle and the unlicensed scene and things. And uh, be nice, be nice just to give something back to the, you know, the youth kids in the, in the town. Um, not that I, I never went into this wanting to be like, respected. I've always like living in the shadows and being a quiet person. But uh, uh, obviously, YouTube and things like that, people people see see me on on there and a bit of a name for myself in the town. Even though I don't walk around thinking I'm anything more than what I am, it's just nice to help, help some kids. Just yeah. to help some kids and uh, you know, see how, see how far we go with that for a bit. That would be amazing, mate. I, that would be absolutely amazing because the kids now, they need, they really, really need that sort of positive role model, that sort yeah. of thing. I mean, look, I, I, I was a horrible little kid when I was when I was younger. You know, I never had that. It's, um, I, I believe all kids should have a, have a curriculum at school where they have to go boxing because I think it gives, them, it gives one another a bit of respect. They respect each other. You know, the, 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 our, that going, our gym goes to different gyms, different areas. They bump into town and they see each other, we spar with you and things like that. So they're trying to kill each other, you know? Because they, they, once you know each other, it's a bit different, isn't it? You know, necessarily want to punch somebody's head and or stab them or something. It's, it's just different, isn't it? So boxing does a lot for the kids in, in the town. So it should be more widespread where everybody's, uh, everybody, everybody has to learn a bit of boxing, I think. Yeah, they should. They should. I mean, whether they go into it or not, like the self-respect for other people, the confidence, everything like this, it, it just does wonders, mate. So 
I really hope you do that. So, yeah. uh, and then we'll um, we'll wrap this up. So, uh, right. So that's the future plans. That's um, oh yeah. You mentioned the unlicensed. I never have asked you about this because I I followed your career since the beginning with BKB. But yeah. before that, with unlicensed, hand on heart, I don't know loads about it. How many fights did you have back then with the club? Uh, well, my in total with bare knuckle, and that was my seven for I'm twenty three and four with bare knuckle. Okay. So I've had uh, the loss against Mickey. I lost against a, lad, a man called Mo Carbu in the, in the town. I dislocated my shoulder. Um, I lost to Mason Shaw on uh, my home show. I lost my my British my my, my Bournemouth title to Mason Shaw. Uh, good fight. We stood there and had punched each other's head in for five rounds. It was a good fight. Just lost on points and uh, lost to another lad called Mark Saunders. He's I fought him twice. Uh, I knocked him out in the second fight. Um, good, good, good lad. But yeah, uh, I, I just, I just did it for a bit of fun, you know. It's uh, yeah. And then originally, I took up the bare knuckle for a bit of fun. It got a bit more serious after a couple of fights, you know. So yeah, I, uh, I just like fighting, you know. I've been good at, it. I've been good at it over the years. So it's put, it's put me in good stead for it. So mm. you no, know, no, obviously. Doing what everybody else does, fighting at school, in the streets, and things like that. So, ah, oh, good. And the last, last two things, and then we'll wrap this up. Um, you mentioned earlier that you're cool with all the guys you fought, except Eric. You keep in touch with them all and everything. Yeah. Do you think um you'll ever speak to Eric again, or is that sort of off the cuff? Uh, do you know what? I don't really know. Mm. You never know, do you? Because uh, BKB are in partnership with uh, BYB. He's a heavyweight. Um, even though uh, the weights are different on uh, BKB and BYB, so even as a cruiserweight, which I'm a cruiserweight world champion, I'll still be classed as a heavyweight over there. So uh, you never know, do you? You never know. Funnier things have happened, didn't they? But do you know what? If they put something on the line, I'd fight him tomorrow. It's not an issue. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you never know. Like I say earlier, we're very personally, I mean, I got respect for him as a fighter, you know. Some of the things he yeah. said, some of the things he says, I sort of separate that from, you know. Yeah. But anyway, that's by the by. And the last thing, shout outs, thank yous. So we need to mention sponsors. We need to mention like anyone else you'd like to thank, with trainers and just the people that help you basically in whatever way they they help yeah, you. Yeah, uh, well, we got. I've got. I've got loads of sponsors actually. Uh, got um, Pro Drainage, uh, Mark Kelly Grundy. Uh, Par Roofin, Paul, Mild Roofin, CS Roofin, Shane. Uh, do, 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 who else have we got? I've got loads of brain, brain dead. I am Liam. Barrett, Born of Ice Creams. Um, uh, Excel Waste, Excel Waste in London. Uh, Nathan Roberts, the biggest waste company in the town. JK Cars and Commercials. Um, S Metal Recycling. I, I have got one. Um, I don't know the bloody name of it now. I don't know. Can I Can I get off this, Liam? Can I have a look at it? Yeah, if you want to, mate. Yeah, we don't want to leave anyone out. I'm sorry I put you under pressure there for a the minute. But, uh, yeah, you have a quick look. And it's, it's good to uh, good to give them a mention. Yeah, Fusion PV. Did you see that? That's, um, uh, they are a solar panel company. Um, A-Star Garden Rooms and Home Improvement. Luke Matthews. Who else? I know there's some more, Liam, but yeah, you know, they just have to get one on a later date, wouldn't they? But um, yeah, no, uh, it's been wicked. And you know, thanks very much for having me on your podcast. There's, there's my belts in here. I don't know if you want to see it. That's oh, there's Eric, Eric's world title. There's yeah. my bridge. And there's a new one. Amazing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's that. So. Well, but, you know, uh, Thanks for taking the time to give me a podcast. There's not something I normally do, so... Uh, it's my pleasure, mate. I've wanted to have you on the show for a long time. Yeah, no, I think it's been cool. Yeah, and so, I really appreciate it. I'll send this to you when it's released. Um, yeah. I'll get it out there to everybody. Be very grateful for a reshare if you can, uh, if you yeah. can do it's the only thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, thank you very much for your time, mate, and best wishes oh. to your family as well. Um, and yeah, no you enjoy your time with... Uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> this is baby uh, Kendall so being a dad again now
Thank you very much for watching. Um, please subscribe to the Simply Inspired YouTube channel and there will be more videos coming soon.